How's it going, Teal Boys? Today, I believe that we have a video that is going to be highly sought after. Version 9 of the College Football Revamped mod just came out yesterday. And along with that came this playbook editor, which allows you to not just edit plays that are in the game, but you can edit formations, you can create plays. I think you can add formations if you want. So I've spent the past day pretty much just trying to figure out exactly how this works. It's not as uh, simple as it seems on the surface, so there's a little bit that you need to know, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys how to get it and how to how to do some stuff with it. So right off the bat, your first step is going to be to go to the College Football Revamp to Discord. This is where you're going to get the files that you need to use this. Um, I'll put a link to pretty much anything that I talk about uh, that you need to get down in the description. So this will be the link that you'll follow to get the tools that you need. The first tool, you'll go to this tool um, channel in the, uh, the Making Your Own Mods section. And in that channel, there's really only one post, and it's got this NAE10265.zip folder. You're going to download that, and you'll extract those files into a folder. I just put them on my desktop. Uh, you can put them wherever. Make sure before you do anything to change any files or move any files that you make a backup of the copies of, of everything that you have in case you break something. Uh, read through every readme that you see, every bit of documentation, because it's going to help you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. But uh, in here is the NCAA AST editor. So you'll run that application. It'll pop up. It's just a blank screen. You go file. You'll open the NCAA AST. Now I'm doing all this on RPCS3. Um, some of these steps will be different on a PlayStation. But again, uh, if you use the resources in the Discord and you read all the documentation, um, you'll be able to figure that out. And then if you have questions, search for them on the Discord. And if you can't find what you're looking for, um, you could ask the, uh, the members of the community. But again, on the RPCS3, for me, uh, the file that we're looking for, and it's likely the same for you, is under the HDD0 folder. You go into that, you'll go to the disk. This is for the disk version, not the download version. Again, that's a slight change, but we're all looking for the same file anyways. Then you'll go into the NCAA 14 one. You'll go to the PS3 game. The user directory, I don't know, the USR DIR folder. And from here you have all these AST folders. And the one that you're gonna want is the QKL underscore miscellaneous one. Now you will copy this and then paste it to your desktop or if you wanna create a folder somewhere else, but you'll need to copy this. Don't cut it, don't remove it, just copy it. And then when you put it onto your desktop, you'll open it. And so it will load the directory and you see these are all different files, um, database files, all sorts of stuff like that. You're going to go to the seventh one. It just labeled as seventh. You can see it's a database file by the DB. You'll click extract selected and you're going to extract that to your desktop as well. It will show up on your desktop as file 00007. And so for now, we can minimize the AST editor. And we'll go back to the Discord. We'll, we'll go to the Playbook Editor Support Channel. And we'll click onto that. And in the pinned messages, we have a bunch of new stuff, including this how to use new plays in your NCAA 14 game. So you're going to want to click this link. This link provides you with a document. Let me drag it on over here. It's an entire document on not just how to use the new plays, but how to edit or create your plays. And you can see... It has directions on how to do all this for everything. There's a table of contents off to the side. Every single thing in here you're going to want to read to learn how to do stuff. There's some very, very important information, especially in creating custom routes um, and editing formations. So make sure you do that. There's a little bit of troubleshooting at the bottom if you're having problems. But if you have a question about it, there's a very good chance it's in here. If it's not, this is the channel to ask in as well. It is the editor support channel. So that's the place to direct your questions. But then what you're going to want to do is go to this GitHub link, which will give you the playbook editor. And you're going to want all of this. So you'll go to the code one. You will download a zip and you'll save that to your desktop as well. And then you'll make a new folder, call it something like playbook editing. It doesn't really matter. And you'll extract all these files into that folder so make sure that you read all the readmes and now to launch the playbook editor you'll just go through this big nest of folders so you'll playbook editor playbook editor playbook editor again 
more readmes to run, you know, read through. If you uh, are having troubles, you might find your answer there. Uh, continue to go through these folders until you get to this one. Again, back into the playbook editor, and now you'll go to the bin folder, the release folder, and here it is. Here's your editor, this application, this exe file. You'll launch that. It'll bring up this new window. You'll hit open NCAA playbook, and then you'll go to your desktop, and you'll open that file 00007 folder, and it will load everything. It'll show you a loading screen. It'll bring you to this it'll show what file you have open so we're going to full screen it and now we can start to edit plays so you start off you'll choose whatever formation you want to use um and i've already made a couple of these plays up that i'll show you guys uh but we'll edit a couple here on the fly just to kind of show the workflow now uh let's say i want to make something out of the shotgun You'll click the formation you want. You pick the sub formation. So we'll go with the shotgun spread for this editing, just because why not? It, we got receivers on both sides. Now, right off the bat, we can see the play that we're in is the 45 base dummy. Um, we can see the play art for it. We can see all the positions. And if you click through, it'll highlight what position you're dealing with. And here's where it can start to get a little bit complicated. There's a lot of things that we can do here. If you don't want to deal with the complicated stuff, maybe you just want to change a couple of routes. We'll start with that. The easiest thing for you to do will be, let's go ahead, let's go with a pass play because changing passes and changing runs does matter or does change how things work a little bit. So let's say the X follow play. This is what it looks like. Say we want to edit the routes of um our x receiver so we'll go to that receiver which in this case is the wide receiver too you can tell because it highlights it we'll right click it we'll go swap slash edit psal and now we can choose what type of route they are going to run and then the, specifically the route itself now you can edit these further but it'll mess with play art stuff so if you're just looking to you know change routes i suggest that you stick with just pretty much this step um, so right now he's running like an in out, uh, let's say we want him to run a hitch and go. So we'll click hitch and go, and then we'll click one of these PSAL IDs. There's two for the hitch and go. There's, um, 905 and 906. Let's have him run the 905 route. We'll click off of this window because it does pop up its own separate window. You'll click off of that and now it's going to be saved. You can see that it's like that. If this is all that you wanted to do, you could be done. You could go and you could hit save playbook, but we're going to edit a couple more things just as a proof of concept. We probably, I don't know if this play will work at all. Uh, <laughs> you can change um, where the quarterback drops back or how do the quarterback drops back. You can see there's so many different uh, variations available to us. It doesn't really look like he's doing anything on a lot of them, but like right here, you can see he would be rolling outside of the pocket um so we could okay we'll have the quarterback roll outside the pocket and then let's just say this guard will go and click on uh swap and edit for the guard and right now you can see he's pass blocking and we could scroll through the different types of pass blocking and you can see you know where he's going to do his blocking so uh in this situation because we're rolling outside the pocket we're going to just have him be a polling guard and come with us um and now look at that we have a new play so we want to change the name of this because it's a new play. We'll click the edit play data button. It pops up this, and this is uh, a lot of complicated stuff. I don't understand what every value does, um, but if you're changing routes, like maybe you take a receiver off of a route and, and you have them blocking uh, this PER, uh, there's PER1, PER2, there's one for each of them. You need a number, uh, you, it doesn't matter, I don't think what the number is, but you need it to be greater than one or greater than zero um to to have the button uh, that you're going to throw to them show up over their head so everybody right now has one that we're passing to and it's not specific per formation which one of these uh points to each receiver so per1 could be our x receiver in one formation and it could be the running back in another so that's something that you'll just have to fiddle around with. Um, if you're trying to swap that, it's gonna take trial and error, but that's kind of everything in this. So if you were to get rid of them, say, say maybe we wanted the X receiver to be blocking and we didn't want their, you know, their the button to show above their head when we went into a route, you would change that number to a zero. Um, but for now, we're just gonna change the name. So you'll go to the name tab. 
And since we want to change it, we'll call it the X hitch route. And then we'll go ahead and hit update. And we can see up at the top, now it says X hitch. Uh, and that's in our list of uh, all of these different plays. And we could be done there as well, but we're going to continue to show you some stuff before we load in. Now the edit formation button uh, gives, again, a lot of different data. And there's a couple of important things. The ones that matter the most are the D position, the E position, FMTX, ARTX, FMTY, ARTY, the XY, FX, and FY. Now, before we move on, there is two different like play arts that we can see. There is this, which is what will show up in your playbook when you're selecting the play. And then there is the one that shows up on the field. The ARTL is the one that shows up in your playbook. The PSAL is the one that shows up on the field. Um, you can't always change the ARTL one. That's why I'm saying if you just want to change plays, edit the plays that I just, sh uh, the way that I showed you how. If you're going to go more advanced, your play art won't be correct in your playbooks. Um, but we'll go to the PSAL. It shows you again where everything is. And if you want, you can change what this looks like. Um, I prefer this dark with the whole numbers just because if you're editing, you're running, it shows you what each gap is named. So it's a little bit easier to remember where everything is like, okay, I want to run him to the one gap. Yeah, you can just be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So that's useful. Now, what we want to do is we can look at this edit formation tab. And by looking at this, we can see the name of the sub formation. If we wanted it to be called instead of the shotgun spread, maybe we call it the shotgun dip. Uh, we could change the name to dip and uh, we would hit enter on that. It would, it's going to take the thing away and now we have the shotgun dip formation. Um, but there's a couple of things that matter the most on this. And again, as we click around here, you can see the blue um, circle moving around just based on which position each one of these rows corresponds to. And there's a couple of columns that matter. D position, E position, all four of these FMTX, ARTX, FMTY, ARTY, the X, Y, FX, and FY all matter. We're not entirely sure on the rest of them. Again, some of this is in the documentation, so you'll have to do some reading for yourself because I don't fully understand all of it. But the D position is very important because that is the depth chart position. So if you wanted to, you could essentially do positional subs from this menu. Um, one is the first on the depth chart, obviously. Fourth is the fourth on the depth chart. E position is what position each thing is playing. So, so the first row is going to be your quarterback in the formation. And so if you wanted a wide receiver to come in and play quarterback, we would switch the E position to three. And after that, we can see this now here. Instead of saying at QB1, it switches to wide receiver one. Uh, we already have a wide receiver one on the field, though. So D position, if we change it to four, or no, we have four. We have so many wide receivers on the field. If we change it to five, uh, then it's going to change it to the your wide receiver five will come in as the quarterback on the position. Uh, this isn't super useful on a lot of stuff, but it is important to know. Uh, and if you want to maybe throw in a tight end at a specific position, then that would be useful as well. I believe tight end would be four. So tight end five is in there right now. Uh, we want our quarterback still though. So we'll go back to quarterback one and zero is quarterback. One is running back. I think two is fullback, three is wide receiver, so on and so forth for the offense with nine being like your right tackle. Um, and now the FX, FMTX, ARTX, FMTY, and ARTY are how you would change the play art of where a player if, is positioned in the formation. But if you want to change where a player lines up on the field, we can change the X and Y values. The F version, the FX and the FY is when you flip the play. So say you hit right trigger and because you want, uh, you just want to flip the play. You know, it's a feature in the game. You, that, that would correspond to what it looks like when it's flipped. So typically you want these numbers to be the same, but it allows you some freedom there. So here, we can see that our quarterback is in this spot. This is our, out of the shotgun. Maybe we want, uh, well, let's not move the quarterback. Let's say, let's move our wide receiver four. So we'll click down to where the wide receiver four is, and we can see they are at X 10.4, and they're 2.2 uh, behind the line. Um, so maybe we want them to line up a little bit further back or a lot further back. So we'll move that to negative 4.2. 
Let's see if it updates properly. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries because it doesn't want to. And we can see there it moved the wide receiver back just to show you in a more uh, obvious sense. If we switch that to 10.2, you can see how far back off the line it drops the wide receiver. And this is, I mean, you could run the play like this. I will say it's not going to let you move a player forward. I've tried that. You'll get hit with an offside. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but we'll keep this negative 4.2. So we've dropped this wide receiver a little bit off the line. And now what we want to do is move them a little bit further to the left. So the X value, we'll switch that instead of 10.4, we'll go 8.4. And again, you want to make sure that you're changing these on both of these, but 8.4. So now the receiver has moved a little bit to the left. And like, again, if we just as a proof of concept, if we wanted him to line up under center with the quarterback, you could change that value to zero. And now he's under center and you could snap the ball. It will go through the wide receiver but you could have him standing in a very weird spot. So a lot of flexibility with these options and how you position your receivers. And the reason I mentioned these top four uh, columns is because if you switch where somebody's standing in the formation, it won't switch what it looks like out of the play art. So let's exit out of this and we'll go back to the play art in the ARTL. And again, the ARTL is what it looks like when you're selecting a play and we can see that uh, our receiver hasn't changed. So again, we'll edit the formation and we know that uh, the guy that we moved was, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six down. So one, two, three, four, five, six down from there is our wide receiver. And uh, from here, you'll just kind of have to move the values a little bit to try and get this, this to line up. And I believe that the FMTX is the flipped ones or the ones with the EPT are, are the flipped play. So you'll need to, I don't know, you'll need to um, click this flip play button to try and figure it out, I believe. Um, but for now, what we can do is the A ARTX is the X position or the horizontal position. So we moved this receiver a little bit to the left, right? So what we need to do is lower the value of this. We didn't move him too far. Let's try 120 as our value and see how far to the left it moves him. That's a little bit too far. How about 135? That See, that's a little bit better, not perfect. We also moved them back a little bit, so we'll go to the ARTY value, and we will increase that number. This is, uh, if you're familiar with programming at all, uh, uh, the Y values are typically up higher. So if we make this 80 instead of 74, it drops them back just a little bit, and now our play art for this formation is correct um, in both versions. So that's the simple way to edit stuff again. Let's just continue to edit this play just as a proof of concept. If we wanted to change this wide receiver three, what route they were running, we could go and say, hey, we want to run a wheel route. Uh, and then you would go ahead and select a wheel route. And now he's on a wheel route for the play. Click away from it. And that's the simple way of editing uh, a play. You can do this for runs as well. It's a little bit different. Um, you can know what type of play it is. If you hit the uh, edit play, it'll show edit pass play data. Um, it can get a little bit wonky, so I would try to avoid like messing, or trying to pass out of a running play or try to run out of a passing play. Um, but let's go ahead and edit a run. So here we've opened up the halfback sweep. Again, if we hit that play data, now it shows uh, run play data. Some of these values do matter a lot. And again, you'll need to read about this uh, on that big document because when you edit a formation, you need to change a lot of this stuff. Um, because it, it allows the AI's defense to kind of recognize what's changed in the formation and it will allow them to play call for that. Uh, if you're just trying to break the game, then then it doesn't matter, but <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll allow you to do some big stuff. So for now, we won't edit that. We will go, our running back is running a specific way. We'll, we'll edit uh, what type of run. Right now it's a halfback sweep. We're gonna swap slash edit the piece out. So there's halfback run toss. There's a bunch of different types of stuff, but for the running back, you're gonna want to go with a running back thing. Um, run drive. There's so so there's draws, dives, power rows, read options, stretches. Right now, it's a run toss that is being called just for the route that the running back is running. Um, but maybe we want the running back to go up the middle on this play. So let's go with a dive, and then we can choose between which uh, plays are available to us. And this, uh, this is kind of an important thing. We're going to go with just a simple run dive. You can see it's this uh, 18 ID. 
And now what's important is, again, if we switch back to the different play art and pop up uh, the holes, we can see that now we have him running to the just to the right of the center, which is the zero gap. So we would need to go to edit play data and change the hole that they're running to. So before it was running outside the tackle to the seven, we need to change this seven to a zero and update the play. And again, that tells the defense where you're running. It tells the uh, lineman where to block, I believe. And now that we have that, we can go and change. Let's see, we say we want this tackle to pull, which is kind of weird. We can edit the way they that they're tackling it. There's different run blocking formations. So we can scroll through these and uh, the different types of play art that we can switch between um, can kind of help you in determining what it looks like or what, what's going to happen with the run. Um, but as long as you're not creating your own types of routes, this would work pretty well. So here we'll have the tackle pull to the O gap. Um, and that's that. Now we have our run. We're going to edit the play data again. We have, again, the hole is zero because we're running to the O gap. Um, but now what we need to do is let's change this. It's no longer the sweep. So we're going to call it the tackle dive we'll see if i can spell properly we'll update that because the tackle is moving and we're going on a dive and so now our play is done again in the shotgun dip so we have two plays done and that is the simple version so i'm going to go ahead and show you now how to save the files that you've done uh we'll load into the game we'll show off the the couple of plays that we've done and then we'll go into some more advanced play creation stuff so to save it you'll click save playbook uh, it'll automatically save and what the remember the file that you have open is the files with all the 07.db and that's the one that's on your desktop so again we'll open up the ast editor you never needed to close it but if you did reopen that uh qkl miscellaneous folder that you extracted to your de desktop and we're going to go back to the seven row here click on it make sure it's blue right click it and click replace selected and you're going to select the file and where you saved it, the one on your desktop, the one that you just edited. It'll show the import name. That's where, you know, ch double check that to make sure it's the right file. And then from there, you'll go file and you'll hit save as. And you'll go back to your RPCS3 folder and go back into the hard drives you or wherever you originally had gotten the folder from. Um, so for me, it's it's through this whole chain. We go to the user directory or whatever that is. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, and then you'll resave it to the file that you had initially done, um, which is the, the QKL miscellaneous, but the non-edited one that you pulled out to your desktop. So you'll hit save there. You will replace the file. You'll overwrite it. And now you're done. You've added the plays to the game. So we just have to launch it. And so from here, we have the plays. We'll go to our custom playbooks. Um, this is, again, the one that we've just been kind of editing. And you want to make sure that you have the right formation selected. So we just did, what, a shotgun play. So we'll go. We renamed our, our formation to the shotgun dip. So we can go straight to that. Uh, we will add that. And we will add and remove the form. So let's just get rid of a bunch of stuff that we didn't do. And we can look at... Uh, the plays that we did work with. Now here are the two that we made. Here's our X hitch. We can see the pulling guard. We can see X the X button running the, the hitch. We can see the quarterback rolling out. And here's the tackle dive where we can see the running back going to the O gap with the tackle pulling. So we have that into our playbook now. And we can go ahead and save the playbook after adding that. And let's load into a practice mode. Uh, we'll make sure that we have the correct playbook selected and we'll load in to the practice and now we can go and select our play so uh, we'll go to the shotgun dip uh, and we will start with the X hitch and then uh, I chose rice just because they're not as good of a team as Orion so it should be easier to run our plays but we can see uh, the play art looks correct if we snap it we'll roll out to the pocket we can see that that guard um pulled with us so if we watch uh, number 56 he pulls to the right to help block as we would be rolling out um you know again this isn't a perfect play but it, it, we made it up and if we watch the x receiver in jalen red we can see he does a little hitch and then he goes so 
everything that we did works in this play and maybe not doesn't work the best especially in a game situation but it works now let's try the other one the tackle dive we'll load in we can see that it work looks right on the on the play stuff and again look we changed the formation on this and williams there is further off the line he's really far back and he's pretty close inside so even that formation uh change worked but let's hand it off to Travis Dye up the middle, and ooh, it didn't work. So again, not everything uh, is figured out. Uh, the mo most likely what I did wrong is I chose the wrong kind of uh, handoff for the quarterback because we didn't change the way that the quarterback was handing off. We just changed the way that the running back was getting the handoff. So what we need to do is uh, go back in and figure out the right way for the quarterback to hand off. And a lot of this is going to be trial and error because it's not obvious from the beginning. Um, so if you don't have it right away, just, just go back and uh, try different things to see what it works. It's a little bit annoying because you have to make the changes, save them, and then load into the game and try them. And so it's not easy. So that's why I say pass plays are the easiest thing to change. Um, but it's definitely worth it with some of the options that we can create. So we'll just look quickly. If we go to the quarterback, we can see quarterback drop back. There's a bunch of different stuff. I believe the lowercase b on drop back is where the quarterback will hand the ball off. And the uppercase is like where they actually just go to hand the ball off. I have honestly very little idea on how this works. The best way that we could do this to figure it out is to just look um add another play and this is very useful for a lot of stuff if you're trying to figure out what type of play to run or, or how to get a motion to work properly go and look at a play that has that for instance we can see right now in the one that we have we the quarterback's psal uh, that's not working is 25 75 but if we go and look for a run up the middle maybe this inside zone would work it's kind of similar because you are handing it off up the middle. You are going to the one gap instead of the O gap. So maybe it doesn't work perfectly. But you can see the, the P-Sal on this one is 47-27. So again, I have no idea to know if this was, would work other than just by trial and error. But what we're going to do is change uh, the P-Sal that we have to that 47-27. And see if that works. And again, going to the P-Sal play art thing looks or is going to give you a better idea whether or not something will work. You can see where the quarterback's uh, going with the handoff. Um, so like if we scroll through all these different uh, P-Sals, we can see down here the quarterback on some of them will be like rolling out towards a different area. And on the 47-27, he is going towards the running back. So maybe it would work. Maybe it wouldn't. That's the basics on how you would just make a play. So if you just want to edit routes... Uh, or just like choose different routes. This is a super easy way to do it. It shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, you just have to choose the type of play that you want and you can choose the ID. Um, like boom, we just changed the, the route on that wide receiver and then that play would be done. So if all you wanted was just a simple edit, there you go. We're going to move on to some more complicated stuff. And, and again, a lot of this, you're going to have to play around with it. It's not super intuitive. You will have to, to go with a lot of trial and error. It is going to take time. It's not just something that you can go into, um, but that's not to be expected. This is, a, this is a mod created by people who just have a lot of passion for it. So uh, they've done a fantastic job as it is. And, you know, if it takes a little bit of work for us to, to figure some things out, then so be it. Um, let's go ahead. I've already made some plays in some of these formations. So I want to go ahead and look at a couple of these and I'll show you how a couple of things work. So the bunch quads out of the shotgun is one that I've been working on. And that's my bad. It wasn't the bunch quads. It's the quad trio that we've done a bunch of stuff in. Um, you can see there's not a crazy amount of plays. But if we go, you can see there's a couple that I have made. Uh, I made X Zig, which just has the, the X receiver running a double hitch and go. Um, but again, if we go and look at the, the ARTL play art, it's not going to be correct. It can't show that necessarily. Um, I don't know if you can change these and add your custom routes as a play art. So you just have to know, okay, this play is named this and that's what this receiver does. Um, there might be a way around it. I honestly don't know what it is, but, uh, we can see that it's edited. And now what we can do is I can actually show you how to edit these things. Let's go ahead and I'll just open up the wide receiver one. If you hit swap slash edit piece out, you can see all these, these values down here. 
um, beyond just what we see to begin with that what we've done you can change these values um, in most of the circumstances you're just going to be changing the first two values um, and those will change what happens with the route so again the document that was provided is going to prove super useful here it shows what each of the codes mean um in in what you're doing uh not it doesn't show all of them but for the most part it does and, and you can figure out just by again looking at other plays to see what they do um so i'll go through the ones that i can think of right now that i know code eight is your receiver running in a straight line code nine is your receiver making some sort of cut whether it be this hitch or just like a cut straight to the left or the right code 14 will turn her out into a block and release so if you want to have a receiver blocked for a little bit and then release to go on a route, you would use that. Code 25 is a pause in the route. So you'll use this either before a code eight at the beginning of the play to tell them just kind of to hold at the beginning of the line before starting their route, or you use it after a curl to hold them, basically get them to, to stop. So like if you're running a curl, you'll go with a code 25 afterwards. Uh, and that will just force them just kind of to stay there for a little bit. I don't entirely know. I believe code 10 just releases them and allows the, the receiver to kind of run on their own. Like what you see when a play breaks down, eventually the receivers will just start to run all over the place. I believe that's what that is. Codes 45 and 46 relate to a player going in motion with the 45 designating where the player motions to and, and the angles that they take on the motion. I'm not entirely sure what the 46 does, but I believe it just marks the end of the, the player motioning. Code 255 is just going to be at the end of the play no matter what. You should have that blank at all times. And that's what most of the codes are for uh, route running. I think there might be some other stuff. Now, each code has its own values. There's three values that matter in each code. Uh, some of the some of the values, I guess, don't matter, but for the most part, they will. So let's go ahead and just create a route from scratch. Let's take uh, the wide receiver one. So we can see that they start with a run, just going straight because it's code eight, and there are three values. The first value is the distance that the, the part of the route will travel. The second number is the angle that they will take. And the third number is the speed at which they will run that route. This is all code eight specific. Each code the values mean different things so 254 is the max and it just basically means that they're sprinting we could change it to the number 100 and they would run uh, a little bit less than half their top speed i don't know necessarily what the purpose of some of that would be but i'm sure that you guys will figure some stuff out so let's go ahead and edit a few of these and you'll see them take place and again you won't see this in the artl version of the play thing so this is where it gets a little bit weird and where the the play art can get messed up but let's go ahead and edit this. You'll need to make sure that you click this edit tab when you're editing a piece out. You could also just create a new one. So since we're creating a new route, we'll go ahead and hit, uh, we'll copy the piece out because we want to start with this as our base, but then we will create a new one. Um, and it just basically bases off of it. You can choose which ID you want. There's only so many, but that's a lot of different routes you can create. So this will be considered route 307 by the game. Now we want him to go at say a little bit further. So we'll start and we will make this, um, 200, uh, and we'll go ahead and hit create and you'll want to make your edits incrementally like this, but you can see that the route is now longer like that. Um, and he is running at a 32, which must be just straight down the field. Uh, but if we change this to, let's say, 60, you can see it takes a completely different angle. I don't really know what this is based off of because 90 has you going backwards. Um, and what does zero have you doing? Zero, maybe you're running flat. So, okay, so it must be uh, some weird circle where 30 is this and 90 is that. Uh, I don't know, but we're going to have them run, <laughs> let's say, at a 42. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, not straight, kind of heading, you know, into the center of the field. Um, and that's the straight part of the route. Now we'll go on to the second step of the route, which is uh, a cut. And right now it's a code nine. Um, so the first value on the cut is the direction that they cut. Two is a cut to the left. One would be a cut to the right. So you can see that it just swaps the direction he's going the second value is the type of cut that they're going to go on one is this little uh short route where you just kind of do a double move it's not too crazy 
Um, two is a little bit more severe cut. It's kind of like back to back 90 degree cuts. If we go to the third one, it's less severe. It's just like a little bit of a, you know, a change in direction. Uh, four, I believe becomes a little bit, it's, you know, in between. So, you know, you can use all of these to your advantage, trying to make the right route. If we go with a five, it's way more severe, kind of more of a hitch. I believe a six and seven get even more crazy. Um, six doesn't show up as anything. Six might not exist, to, uh, to be honest. I don't know. Seven, I know, is a hitch. Um, and then one of these, the, I don't know if it's seven or if eight's different, but that's how you would put a hitch into the route. And then if you really wanted to change things up, you could change the value of the direction that you're running after, and this changes the entire outlook of the way that a play looks. So if we change the angle for the uh, this next step afterwards so that they're running to the left, now you can see they do a little hitch, but then cut to the right, or we can uh, change it to a four here and they do a little move there and we could change it again if we change the angle that they go at. So there's so many different ways that you can change what a route looks like. Uh, and you can add a bunch of steps. I wouldn't add too many steps. I have tried once to do like something with 12 steps and it eventually got to the point where I literally couldn't throw to the receiver. Like he just, like I would throw to him and he just wouldn't even try to catch it. So uh, try to limit yourself on the amount of steps that you have. Uh, but now let's add in another step after this. Uh, we have this straight. Let's add, let's see, insert a step below. We're going to do another thing. We're going to just curl at the end of the route. So let's say curl to the right, which I believe is a one. We go with the uh, the two. It's not as crazy. Uh, we can see that they kind of curl back there. And now if we swap in and add a number after the nine, we're going to add a code 25, which again is the... Uh, a delay that they take so that you can basically make them stop in place and the only value that matters is the value one and that just corresponds to how long they stay before they start to take off and you know do their business again so you could have somebody curl in the middle of a route and have them stop for a second and then start running again um and these numbers i don't exactly know let's look at the hatback he's kind of running a curl so he's got a 25 and he sits for 64. This doesn't relate to seconds. It's probably some sort of like ticks that the game does. Um, but we'll go and 64 seems like it might be a decent time. Let's go ahead and do 80 so that they sit there for a while. And then it will have a 10 just to release them from the route. And it'll end in a 255. The values on those don't matter at all. So we've created our own route. It's kind of a wonky looking one but it exists um and again like i said we can see the play art here and this will show up on the field when you're in the game like when you're right before you're about to snap when you're looking at what play you've called but it won't show up in your playbook and i don't know if there's a way to add it because it's a custom route so uh when you're choosing plays you have to make sure that you or when you're creating plays you either make routes that already exist um because it, there's, the game only has so many of these play art uh routes in it or you just need to make sure that you remember what routes are when you when you name them. So, so for instance, we could edit the play data and call this one something else. So instead of slot outside, we could call it uh, weird, funky out curl. And I don't I don't know if there's actually a length limit on that. There might be, um, but for now it works. And that's a general overview on how to create your own route. Again, there's other stuff that can be worked with. I haven't done a whole lot with the running, just because if you're doing running stuff, I recommend just completely uh, basing the quarterback's movement and the running's back back's movement off of uh, a play that's already in the game, just so you don't break it too much. Speaking of game breaking, this can also be used for a ton of fun. Let's go ahead and check out. I have made a couple of weird things. Uh, if, we, if we go to the ace formation, we can go, I don't know if you guys can read it, the ace Philly special. Uh, I've made a couple of plays in this one. First of all, <laughs> I have done it. We have created the Philly special in this game. It was really complicated to do. This formation can't be used for anything other than this play. Because if we look at the formation, if you remember the D position and E position, the E position is the one that matters more, I guess, here. Zero corresponds to the quarterback. We put our quarterback in at a wide receiver spot. 
We've put the running back in at the quarterback spot and the wide receiver at the wide receiver spot. Now, if we go to this, we can see the quarterback has a motion in their route. That's what the blue is. And if we click on the quarterback's piece out, we can see 45 is the motion code. So I have him motioning that direction. Um, this isn't perfect because the tight end should realistically be lined up on the other side. And maybe I'll fix that. Um, but the quarterback motions there, gets to the end of his motion. We have him pause for a second at the start of the play. And then he goes out onto a route uh, and eventually... It winds up in the end zone. Um, if we go and look at the running back, who is essentially the quarterback, they're running a quarterback toss. We had to, I, It took me a long time to get to a quarterback toss that would work because a lot of times uh, either he wouldn't toss the ball because the wide receiver wasn't close enough or he would toss the ball and it would be a fumble. <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. And then the wide receiver one, we have them on the halfback pass, which they, the game actually calls the Philly special thing just because it's a halfback pass. Um, but you have to choose the right halfback pass. There's a couple of different ones, and you can see what the, the what the motion of the uh, running back is going to do. And I'll say this last one, the 2869 piece out, you can't do that one in this, because which would have worked perfect because we could have had the wide receiver in the proper spot, but it won't work because this one actually puts the receiver in motion, and you can't motion a, the quarterback and then motion the receiver. So the 303 is the one that seemed to work the best. Um, and it actually ends up working. We'll show you this in a little bit. And I might make just like a standalone video just, just for the clickbait. Uh, but then I went ahead and like I said, we can break the game now with this. So I have a play. Uh, it 100% it works. It's called Free Yards. And again, out of this formation, the running back is the one getting the snap. Uh, and no matter what, you can't have bad snaps in this game. So what I did is I had the running back motion back and then motion up to the line of scrimmage and then it goes straight on a route. Now, the thing is, if you snap the ball to the quarterback while they're in motion, you can't actually run with them. They just run in a straight line. However, I <laughs> have it so that the running back goes out here. Nobody is out here to be guarded. Uh, so the running back goes out in motion, motions up to the line, and then gets to the line of scrimmage, and the ball is snapped directly from him, or from the center to him, out uh, uh, by the sideline, and he just runs forward until he gets tackled. It's free yards. It's guaranteed every play. Speaking of free yards, we have another one. If we go to a different sub-formation of mine, I was trying to do something. It didn't work how I had originally anticipated it. Uh, we've named this subformation the encroacher because if we look when it loads in here, the quarterback is like, what is that, like 30 yards downfield? Uh, I was kind of hoping because the ball teleports from the center to whoever's snapping the ball, I was hoping that it would just teleport into the quarterback's hands and he could just sprint down the field and get a free touchdown every time. Uh, what actually ends up happening is that the quarterback... Uh, when you come out of the huddle, the quarterback tries to run through the line and run to this spot, and they run into the defense on the way. And the refs call the defense for encroachment every time. But if you run this play from the hurry up, the quarterback doesn't run into the line and gets to his spot, and when you snap the ball, you instantly get a dead ball and you get called for the false start. So no matter what, this play creates a penalty. Uh, a dead ball penalty so it's, it's very very weird very game breaking and I think that there's a lot of opportunities that people will figure out to make some like actually ridiculous stuff like maybe you snap it to a quarterback who goes in motion and then they pitch it to something I don't know there's so many different things that I think can be done um, but I guess this isn't me trying to do stuff this is me just showing you what can be done including my, my new favorite play we have this egg zig that we showed you where he goes on that like double hitch and go. We also made this one. I'm calling it spin to win because you have the receiver go and run in a circle and then run down the field. It's kind of hilarious to watch. This is the one where I had tried to get them to run an even tighter circle and like more smooth, but I added too many steps and it just got to the point where the receiver would refuse to catch the ball. So uh, let's go ahead and save what we've done. We'll save the playbook. We'll export it the same way that we did before. And I'll show you how a couple of these plays work in game. And actually, before I do that, I don't know if this will work, but there is the option. You, the defensive plays show up. You can't edit defensive plays as of now. It just doesn't work. I'm not sure I haven't tried this, but there is a way to change potentially your kickoff stuff. Um, so if we go to this outside linebacker, let's actually see if this works. The onside kick, you can see we can change 
how this uh, man runs in the onside kick. So instead of running straight at it, we're going to have him run uh, kind of diagonally towards the ball. And we'll see if this change sticks. Uh, but let's let's get this back into the game. All right. So if we go back to our shotgun, we've got the dip one. There was a couple of things that we did. We have our tackle dive. Actually, we, we fixed the tackle dive potentially. So let's see if the quarterback hands it off. Did we get it to work properly? No, the quarterback still doesn't hand it off. That's when, again, the running stuff is a little bit more convoluted to try to fix. So, um, you know. It's going to take trial and error. Uh, edit things at your own risk. How about the weird funk out curl? You can see in the middle there, it's our A. Uh, the B receiver, you can see that they're just running a curl, but this is the one that we changed. So the play art hasn't changed there. But when we come into the game, you can see now it has that weird route. So uh, it's a little bit uh, longer than I had thought. Let's see if he can even get to the end of the route. He did his little cut. He came back towards the end zone. And then he kind of stopped there at the end zone. Let's go ahead and remove the defense so we can see them uh, run these routes a little bit better. So here on the funk out curl, you can see them running straight. They'll make their little double move cut and then continue on and stop there at the end zone. And then we throw to him. So you can see you can make a route however you want it and it will work out like that. Let me let me show you a couple of the other ones that I made. We have the weird ones, <laughs> the Philly special. There's the uh, the Philly special itself. So we'll run it here. We're not at the goal line, but you can see just as a proof of concept that Tyler Shuck, the quarterback, goes in motion. It gets tossed out, and then we can pass to him. Now, this is pretty tough just because the, uh, the receiver doesn't have good passing capabilities. So it's not going to be a good pass every time. And also, there's something weird. I'm not touching any of the thumbsticks on the controller right now. Uh, the running back will just continue to move. Uh, and I'm now that I'm, I'm trying to move him, he won't. So it's a little bit weird. Uh, I don't exactly know how to, to make it so that you can like move around in the pocket after the pitch. <laughs> Not something I understand, but uh, you can get them to stop if you like hold sprint. And... So the play exists. I mean, this is the Philly special in NCAA 14. Just about as realistic as I could create it. It took a long time to get to this point, but I don't know. Tell me that doesn't look very similar. Um, now we can go to some game breaking plays. Um, now we'll look at the new one, our spin to win play. You can see Johnny Johnson running in a circle and watch, he'll go out. He actually does just straight up run in a circle and then take off downfield. <laughs> I don't know when that play would ever be useful, but just the fact that we can put it into the game is incredible. All right, how about we break the game? Uh, the Philly special <laughs> on our free play one. Uh, you can see uh, Travis Dye is our quarterback, and I messed up something, so he's really slow as he motions to the back. I, I guess there's a, a value in the motion that changes the speed. He runs up to the line of scrimmage, and the ball was snapped. You can see it's in his hands. He's running down the field, uh, and then he scores. I have zero control over him that entire time. So let's bring the defense back into this one. Uh, and you'll see exactly what I mean. They might they might get to the point where they uh, tackle him, but there's nobody over there to guard him. And if you have a quick somebody fast, you know potentially they could really take off. So the ball is snapped. He's got control of it. I have zero control over him, but that was a free almost 20 yards. <laughs> you could you could make this work even better. You could push him further towards the sideline. Uh, you could remove blockers or put like a bunch of guys off to the left so that all their the defense is over there. there there's just so many options and we'll have to go into the game to show the uh, the encroacher. So we're in a game here. If we go into the encroacher, this play doesn't matter which play, just as long as we're in the formation. Watch, you're going to see Tyler Shuck, the quarterback, try to run through the line. He will most likely run into a defensive player. And the whistle gets called. The refs are going to call the defense for encroachment there. And we're going to get a free five yards out of the play. <laughs> so it's absolutely hilarious that that works. And it'll work every time. Um, now here, we're going to run the free yards play. And then we're going to go in the hurry up and call that encroachment play. And you'll see that we'll get penalized. So uh, Die is our quarterback now. We get him in motion going to take a while so you have to be careful with the, the play clock on this i don't want to get hit with a uh, uh delay a game but he's going to run towards the line of scrimmage the ball is going to get snapped and it's straight in his hands 
Then the defense stopped him, but he got a free 16 yards. And now if we go back to the encroacher, you'll see Travis Dye will line up way downfield, right? Like, and he's our quarterback on this play, so the ball will get snapped to him. But it gets immediately called dead for a false start. The ball's in his hands, but the refs don't take too kindly to that one. So we've set ourselves up here to try to run this Philly special. We'll see. Shuck will go in motion. Die takes the snap, pitches it to Johnson, who throws it to the end zone, and Tyler Shuck comes down with it. It just worked. We just scored a touchdown using the Philly special in NCAA 14. How absolutely ridiculous is that? It looked beautiful. Um, the coverage was a little bit too good on Shuck for it to be, you know, as accurate, but hey, it works. Now let's see if the onside kick that we had edited works or if the game's maybe about to free. You can see it's different in the play art. Um, and it does show he's on a different route, so it must have uh, have worked. Well, that was a little cheeky. He got to, off to a running start there. I'm curious if there's a way that we can get our guys to do that. Uh, but look at you can even change special teams plays. So there's our, our proof that, you know, you can do some pretty crazy stuff, some game-breaking stuff in, a, in trick plays. It's not easy to do the trick plays, especially when it's convoluted like that. But, um, I mean, different formations are available. You can do pretty much whatever you want if you're willing to try to figure out how to get it to work. And then, like, even stuff like this, like the fake field goal pass has been the same thing for such a long time. Let's change it. Uh, let's change the route that this guy is running. Um, I mean, how long have you been running the exact same play out of the fake field goal? Well, no more. We've added a, a little hitch and go, and the guy is just going for it. We can change what the kicker is doing on his route. He's running the field goal shovel, apparently. We could change him to block there. There's just, there's so many different options um, that are available, and it's just so cool that it's a possibility now. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope that I touched on enough to at least get you started. Again, you're going to need to read through documentation and do a lot of uh, guesswork yourself because it's not an exact science. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody except for maybe the creator has a, a good handle on how to use this yet. Um, I'm learning, but hopefully the, the information in this video was useful enough to get you started with this uh, play editor. If you found this video useful or if you want to know when new uh, kind of tutorial videos or uh, college football revamped videos come out, please feel free to subscribe. It's, uh, it really means a lot to me when you guys do that. It's been awesome. We're nearing 1800. That's so crazy to me. And while you're down there, you can go to the description where you'll find a link to the college football revamped discord, which will provide you with all of the downloads and links that you need to get going yourself on creating these playbooks. I don't know. Maybe if you guys get into this and you make some crazy stuff, you can, uh, you know, send them to me and we can incorporate them into the, the Teal Boys dynasty. I don't think I'd be against that. Um, there's also links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster where we were playing around with this yesterday. So if you wanted to, you know, see that, that's something that you should follow. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord and a link to get the mod itself if you don't have that yet. But regardless, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, to the best of my ability. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.